Hi, my name is Mario Wendorf. I'm a student at CSU Pueblo. What I'll be teaching you today is how to take a drawing or other still image into Macromedia Flash and then break it up so you can animate it. I'll teach you the process how to do that in Flash and also how to do it in Adobe Fireworks. There are basically two ways you can handle it. We'll start out with our basic image of Mickey. Now mind you, you could have started out with any sort of scanned or hand-drawn image or any other file from the internet, whatever you like. I will be using Mini uh, Mickey today because he is composed of flat shapes, of shapes, lines, and flat colors. But you'll notice that he has a problem. Mickey is very pixelated. And unfortunately you cannot animate Mickey as he is. Mickey is in fact a still image that has a rectangle attached to it. If you attempt to move him, he'll simply move as one piece. But if your goal is to make Mickey move, uh, you'll need to break Mickey down into animatable parts. Now obviously this image was not made to, to do just this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to separate this image into workable parts. There are two ways to do this. We can make a whole new vector flash version of Mickey using a method I'll be teaching and we can also go into fireworks and use this as more of a graphic uh, keeping the original image intact. Now what you're going to first do uh, is something I've already done is file import to stage the image of Mickey and then it'll place them on the stage and what you're going to do is you're going to one layer above th this one insert a new layer and uh, begin to do uh, the most laborious part of the process that will be tracing the image uh, you can do this any way that you like you can use either the brush tool or the line tool or the pen tool depending on which one you're most comfortable with I'm most comfortable with using the line tool using with turning on and off snap as I need it now I recommend if you do the method I'm prescribing now that you use a bright color to distinguish the lines that you're creating from the ones that were a part of the original drawing uh, for instance if you use uh, as your instinct might tell you a dark color uh, you may have a hard time picking out your own lines now you see what I'm doing here is I'm making new lines along the old lines and I'll repeat this process over and over again making sure that all ends are snapped together if you're using the line tool method so that when it comes time to do the fills on top of this that they won't escape now what I'm doing now is you're going to be repeating the pro this exact same process over and over again laying a line stretching the line making sure it conforms to the shape and anytime you need to feel free to toggle snap on or off to make sure you can get that uh, more precise shape of what you need uh, this is the part where you're going to spend the longest amount of time if you do it this method now when you're done with that it's probably going to look something like this it's going to be a fully vector version of Mickey with all lines uh, having been traced like so from the image behind it uh, however there is still uh, we're in more or less the same boat because this Mickey is still composed of lines and fills and is not yet animatable unless of course you prefer to do it frame by frame then he's fully animatable but if you're like me you probably will use the symbol library and symbol, uh, symbol animating technique. Now uh, this brings us to our next step. If you oh by the way when you're doing your fills, uh, one of the best places to get the colors for the fills is the original image. What you do is uh, select your fill color, select the uh, original color you'd like to work with, go into your new new image that you traced, and then use the bucket to fill. Now, uh, since we were still in the same boat, we uh, need to go with, from this vector version to a animated vector version. What we'll do is we'll carefully select each part of the Mickey image. Any part that's meant to be animated separately for the others needs to be uh, selected individually. Now, mind you, this process can be done in one of two ways. You can simply go in and double click and highlight what you need to, or you can use the lasso tool to select sort of a general area, like so. And then you can actually go in and actually deselect and subtract from your selection what you are not going to need. I find this to be the easier of the two if it's a more complex drawing. 
And now that you've selected just the head, just this piece, uh, what you do is you'll right click and convert to symbol, and then you name it something probably like Mickey Head. Now I've done that process for all of the pieces of, of Mickey. Now let's see, I'll show you what that looks like. See, all the pieces of Mickey can be moved separately. Now, mind you, there is a bit of a fundamental problem you'll probably notice at this point. You'll probably notice that when you move Mickey's head, uh, that there's it cuts off too abruptly. That there's not enough to work with there. And you'd be right in assuming that. Uh, what you're going to want to do, and this is the part that's the most difficult, is you're going to take the go back a step, anywhere you need to, go back, and then you're going to add in, I should say rather, this is a step you'll do at this step. I do apologize. What you'll need to do is at this step, when you've made all these pieces, uh, so specifically this chest piece needs to have more behind it. So you're probably going to double click on it, go inside of it, and you're going to edit the symbol and you're going to want to draw new lines behind the head. This is where your skills as an artist are going to come into play. You're going to need to approximate what it looked like behind. And then when you do this, uh, oh in my case I should probably get rid of this extra line. Let's see, if you back up, and now if you move the head, actually this is in the wrong order. There we go. Now when you attempt to move the head, you'll notice that there's something behind it and you won't have as much problems. You'll need to do this sort of approximating for a lot of the um, animation depending on how complex it is and how many separate moving parts that you have. So uh, having done this, uh, we move on to the next step. That was what our goal was all along, was to make a fully animatable version of Mickey. Now obviously uh, animation you're probably going to know how to do yourself, but uh, in case you haven't I'll explain a little bit about what we're going to see. Let's see, these are keyframes. Each keyframe tells Flash that you want something in particular to happen at that moment. I had the uh, layers out of order there. And uh, now, uh, and in each keyframe you're going to see, you're going to see that each frame, uh, each one of these keyframes, little dots, explains to Flash you want something in particular to happen, obviously. And now the lines in between uh, these little arrows represent where Flash is going to take uh, these two points as a reference, and then it itself will approximate the movement and animation in between. This is called tweening, and this is one of the easiest ways to do animation in general. Now what I've done is I've taken each of the parts of Mickey and I have moved them and animated them separately and as you can see Mickey's finally able to move what the goal was all along. Now the thing is though Mickey was a pretty easy image to work with so you might find that working with what you need to work with is going to be more complicated um, other types of hand-drawn sketches and all the separation. Now obviously uh, there's going to be points where you're not going to have the time to do what I've done with Mickey and that's fully understandable that as long as you have a good graphic to work with in the beginning there's no reason you can't do what I just did with just the graphic. In other words you won't need to make it vector yet. Oh I should also note at this time that as far as Mickey's tail goes it also was approximated. There was obviously no tail behind the foot so uh, that was added in during the process. Now if you take graphic in a program like Fireworks, uh, let's see, you'll find you know, a lot of the same problems. Uh, Mickey's still not animatable. Oh, also as a part of this image I should note that I've already cut away part of the white background using the wand selection tool. I had selected all the white background that was a part of the original image. Uh, also, I put a gray background so we can tell the edges of Mickey a little more cleanly and easily than we would otherwise. Now uh, the process here in Fireworks is a little bit different. Uh, what you'll do is use the lasso tool to select any parts that you think you'll need to animate independently. Uh, let's see, from there, let's see, you're going to copy your selection, paste your selection. Now it's going to look like nothing happened for a second, but don't panic. What's happened is it's simply its own piece now. Now here's the trick. Here's what more or less separates the firework method from the flash method, besides being one bitmap, one vector is that all this step, all you do 